blessed Holy Saturday morning. Father D. Simone and myself are here to pray the Divine Office, the Church's prayer for these days of the Triduum. And we, as we've prayed on Holy Thursday and Good Friday morning, and now here on Holy Saturday morning, praying the prayers of the Church with its psalms, its readings, its canticles, and also praying the Lamentations of Jeremiah, as we did on Good Friday. The Lamentations are a first-person lament of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah is seen for us now as a Christ-like figure, and we enter into a spirit of lament and atonement and repentance as we pray them. As you hear the Lamentations sung, you will hear a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, kind of as a citation before the verse is sung. As we enter into this day of great silence, we call to mind the Lord in his mercy, the Lord saving us and redeeming us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth and shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. amen. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for, for our sake, sake endured, endured temptation, temptation and, and suffering. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord, Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before God giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. A mighty God is the Lord, the great King over all the gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains as well. The sea belongs to God, who made it, and the dry land shaped by his hands. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for this is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to God's voice. Harden not your hearts as at Mirabah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your ancestors put me to the test, when they tried me, though they had seen all my work. For 40 years I was wearied of these people, and I said their hearts are astray. These people do not know my ways, so I swore in my anger, then I took an oath in my anger, never shall they enter my rest. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. In peace I will lie down and sleep, when I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me, have mercy and hear me. O men, how long will your hearts be closed? Will you love what is futile and seek what is false? It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Fear him, do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. Make justice your sacrifice and trust in the Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy than they have from an abundance of corn and new wine. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory, Glory to the to Father and to the, the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I, in peace, I will lie down and sleep. My body shall rest in hope. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. He has put into my heart a marvelous love for the faithful ones who dwell in his land. Those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Never will I offer their offerings of blood. Never will I take their names upon my lips. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. The lot marked out for me is my delight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart is re rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. My body shall rest in hope. Lift high the ancient portals, the King of glory enters. The Lord's is the earth in its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things, who has not sworn so as to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. O gates, lift higher heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of, King of glory. Who is he, the King of glory? He, the Lord of armies, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. Lift high the ancient portals, the King of glory enters. From the lamentation of Jeremiah the prophet. Aleph. How tarnished is the gold, how changed the noble metal. How the sacred stones lie strewn at every street corner. sons, fine gold their counterpart, now worth more than earthen jars, made by the hands of a potter. stretch in the desert. Daleh. The tongue of the suckling cleaves to the roof of it, its mouth in thirst. The babe cry out for food, but there is no one to give it to them. to dainty food perish in the streets those brought up in purple 
now cling to the ash heaps. The punishment of the daughter of my people is greater than the penalty of Sodom, which was overthrown in an instant without the turning of a hand. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. The favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. Health. They are renewed each morning, so great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Teth. Good is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good to hope in silence for the saving help of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke from his youth. Yoke. Let him sit alone and in silence when it is laid upon him. Yoke. Let him put his mouth to the dust there may yet be hope. Yo Let him offer his cheek to be struck. Let him filled with dis let him be filled with disgrace. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. Here begins the prayer of Jeremiah the prophet. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inherited lands have been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become orphans, fatherless, widowed are our mothers. The water we drink we must buy, for our own wood we must pay. On our necks is the yoke of those who drive us, 
We are worn out, but allowed no rest. To Egypt we submitted, and to Assyria, to fill our need of bread. Our fathers who sinned are no more, but we bear their guilt. Slaves rule over us, there is no one to rescue us from their hands. At the peril of our lives, we bring in our sustenance in the face of the desert heat. Our skin is shriveled up, as though by a furnace, with the searing blasts of famine. The wives of Zion were ravished by the enemy, the maidens in the cities of Judah. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, be converted to the Lord your God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. While the promise of entrance into his rest still holds, we ought to be fearful of disobeying, lest any one of you be judged to have lost his chance of entering. We have indeed heard the good news, as they did, but the word which they heard did not profit them, for they did not receive it in faith. It is we who have believed who entered into that rest, just as God said, Thus I swore in my anger, they shall never enter into my rest. Yet God's work was finished when he created the world, for in reference to the seventh day, Scripture somewhere says, And God rested from all his work on the seventh day. And again, in the place we have referred to, God says, they shall never enter into my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter, and those to whom it was first announced did not because of unbelief, God once more set a day, today, when long afterward he spoke through David the words we have quoted, today if you should hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, if Joshua had led them into the place of rest, God would not have spoken afterward of another day. Therefore, a Sabbath, Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. And he who enters into God's rest rests from his own work, as God did from his. Let us strive to enter into that rest, so that no one may fall in imitation of the example of Israel's unbelief. Indeed, God's word is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates and divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Nothing is concealed from him. All lies bare and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh. And he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parents, as for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow the captives, Adam and Eve, he who is both God and the son of Eve. 
The Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord, be with you all. Christ answered him, and with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. Out of love for you and for your descendants, I now by my own authority command all who are held in bondage to come forth, all who are in darkness to be enlightened, all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I do not create you to be held in prisoner of hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands. You who were created in my image, rise, let us leave this place. For you are in me and I am in you. Together we form only one person and we cannot be separated. For your sake, I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake, for the sake of man, I became like a man without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you who left a garden, I was betrayed to the Jews in a garden, and I was crucified in a garden. See on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See there the marks of the blows I received in order to refashion your warped nature in my image. On my back see the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands nailed firmly to a tree for you who once wickedly stretched out your hand to a tree. I slept on the cross and a sword pierced my side for you, who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side was healed, has healed the pain of yours. My sleep will arouse you from your sleep in hell. The sword that pierced me has sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise. Let us leave this place. The enemy led you out of earthly paradise. I will not restore you to that paradise, but I will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life. But see, I am life itself and am now one with you. I appointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded. But now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you. Its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned. The banquet is ready. The eternal dwelling places are prepared. The treasure houses of all good things lie open. The kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity. Go sinless, the Lord has been put to death. The world is in mourning as for an only son. Hear my voice, O God, as I complain. Guard my life from dread of the foe. Hide me from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows to shoot at the innocent from ambush shooting suddenly and recklessly. They scheme their evil course. They conspire to lay secret snares. They say who will see us, who can search out our crimes. He will search who searches the mind and knows the depth of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt them sudden wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin and all who see them mock. 
Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's deeds. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Though sinless, the Lord has been put to death. The world is in mourning as for an only son. From the jaws of hell, Lord, rescue my soul. Once I said, in the noontime of life I must depart. To the gates of the netherworld I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. I said I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. My dwelling like a shepherd's tent is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. Day and night you give me over to torment. I cry out until the dawn. Like a lion he breaks all my bones. Day and night you give me over to torment. Like a swallow I utter shrill cries. I moan like a dove. My eyes grow weak gazing heavenward. O Lord, I am in straits, be my surety. You have preserved my life from the pit of destruction, when you cast behind your back all my sins. For it is not the netherworld that gives you thanks, nor death that praises you, neither do those who go down into the pit await your kindness. The living, the living give you thanks, as I do today. Fathers declare to their sons, O God, your faithfulness. The Lord is our savior, we shall sing to stringed instruments in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the joys of hell, Lord, rescue my soul. I was dead, but now I live forever. And I hold the keys of death and of hell. Praise God in his holy place. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his powerful deeds. Praise his surpassing greatness. Oh, praise him with sound of trumpet. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Oh, praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with clashing of cymbals. Let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I was dead, but now I live forever, and I hold the keys of death and of hell. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, in their affliction, they shall look for me. Come, let us return to the Lord. For it is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days, and on the third day he will raise us up to live in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A brief Holy Saturday reflection in the Office of Readings, Psalm 4 said, In peace I will lie down and sleep. In peace I will lie down and sleep. Peace is often the fruit of silence, reflection. Silence is not just meant as an external uh, act of an absence of noise. Silence is meant to go interior, and quite often because of the busy lives we live in the East Coast, in New York, in Staten Island, uh, it is not easy for us to silence or slow down the interior noise in our heart or in our minds. This is where we ask for the Holy Spirit to overshadow us, as he did Mother Mary, to quiet us down to receive. It is not something that we can control. It is not something we can do on our own. It is something we have to surrender. This is quite often very difficult 
for us people who live in big cities in the United States or in Europe, because we've been taught and formed to always control everything, to work for this, to accomplish that. Uh, but that's not the road to holiness. It's actually the opposite. We cannot earn heaven. We cannot earn grace. But isn't it wonderful that we don't have to? We have a God who wishes to lavish us, his children, with all graces and blessings, with great comforts, and, some, and sometimes even with great sorrow and great suffering. That's why we called it yesterday Good Friday. So silence is not just an exterior thing or an absence of noise, but the external is important at times to retreat from the busyness of our lives, the busyness of New York City or the other big cities of the East and West Coast or the Midwest, the busyness of our personal lives and the choices we've made to retreat into the silence, not just of Holy Saturday, but of every day, even just a few minutes, perhaps, 15 minutes, a half hour, preferably in front of the Blessed Sacrament, but possibly that's not gonna be uh, possible for us. To give us interior rest, not just rest on the Sabbath, which is a, primarily a day of worship and a day of emotional and spiritual rest. But the rest and the silence is to lead us to listening to God's voice which is in our heart. He says, if you keep my commandments, I will remain in you and you will remain in me. See if you could take a few minutes today or even longer, a half hour, an hour, a couple of hours. God is not something we fit or a person we fit into our busy lives. It is the person who should be the apex the focus of all our other exterior actions should revolve around him, not vice versa. In the ancient homily on Holy Saturday, there was beautiful reflections on everything that God did for us. But he wants to raise not only the dead of purgation, which is what this homily is referring to, not the hell of the damned, but the hell of purgatory. He doesn't only want to raise them up, but he wants to raise us up, the deadness that's in with all of us, the sin that's within all of us, the apathy, the complacency, the laxity that has crept into all of us, not just the church in the United States or Europe, but in all our hearts, in all our rectories, in all our parishes, in all our dioceses and archdioceses, not because we're bad, because we've fallen asleep, at times. And we all need to be renewed and refreshed and rejuvenated. To say I don't need it, it means that we exactly do. Spiritual health is part of seeing the things that are in us and only the Holy Spirit can show us. And we don't need to be ashamed or embarrassed by them because at times our face does get covered by the spittle of sin, and this covers our hearts, minds, and souls. So let us this day reflect on the silence of Holy Saturday. Our Lord is in the tomb. Let us get rest in him, but rest in the fact that we're gonna celebrate the joy of Easter Sunday tomorrow, when he raises up not only the dead of purgation, but all the deadness that is in our own hearts. And then we could say tomorrow, glory to God in highest and on peace to his people in whom his favor rests. God bless you always. Amen. Amen. For our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death, death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him the name above all other names. For our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death, death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him the name above all other names. Save us, O Savior of the world, 
On the cross you redeemed us by the shedding of your blood. We cry out for her help, O God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Save us, O Save Savior of the world. On the cross you redeemed us by the shedding of your blood. We cry out to your help, O God. Our Redeemer suffered and was buried for us in order to rise again. With sincere love we adore him, and aware of our needs we cry out, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Christ our Savior, your sorrowing mother, stood by you at your death and burial. In our sorrows, may we share your suffering. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ our Lord, like the seed buried in the ground, you brought forth for us the harvest of grace. May we die to sin and live for God. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ the Good Shepherd, in death you lay hidden from the world. Teach us to live a life hidden with you in the Father. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ the New Adam, you entered the kingdom of death to release all the just since the beginning of the world. May all who lie dead in sin hear your voice and rise to life. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, Son of the living God, through baptism we were buried with you. Risen also with you in baptism, may we walk in the newness of life. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us. Now let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All powerful and ever living God, your only son went down among the dead and rose again in glory. In your goodness, raise up your faithful people buried with him in baptism to be one with him in the eternal life of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And give, and give him, him thanks. thanks. As a reminder, please join us tonight for the Stations of the Cross uh, this afternoon. A beautiful time to pray would be between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, but also this evening, you could be praying the Stations of the Cross with us. And also uh, next week during the Easter octave, uh, Father and I will be recording the rosary, uh, all four mysteries of the rosary, uh, for, um, the sorrowful mysteries, the glorious mysteries, the um, luminous mysteries, and the joyful mysteries. So they will be available uh, probably next week uh, during the Easter octave. We'll have them recorded as well. God bless you.